Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope that you are all doing well. I hope that you're all handling the energies as well as you can. Um, I know personally, uh, I've been hit hard with some of these energies. And, you know, I just want to reassure you that this is, for anybody else who's getting hit hard by it, to lean into it, okay? This is purging and it's healing ourselves. I can physically feel like an opening up inside of myself. And it's healing humanity. I have uh, a subscriber and I hope that I say your name correctly. I was trying to get it out of you today. <laughs> But um, I looked it up online, and hopefully I say it right, Mihaila. Um, Mihaila uh, had said, and she's uh, she watches the Pisces readings, and she had said that she had learned that by healing herself, that she was healing the collective and even the universe because we are all connected. And I thought that was really beautiful and I had not really thought about that that way. So just to, you know, do the inner work. This is um, a good time to do that inner work, to do that inner healing. And it's actually a bit of a responsibility as um, light workers, as truth seekers, whatever it is that you identify with, or you, you, you know, as long if you're just on the spiritual path, right? So this moon, just wanted to um, get that out of the way because there are more energies coming in with this moon. Um, so let's talk about the good stuff first, okay? It's going to be a really powerful manifestation moon, okay? So, and remember that we don't have to be happy, happy, happy in order to manifest. That's great if we if we can. But whatever you're feeling, right, lean into it. If you get triggered and you're you're really sad that day, think about what you want, right? Use that energy to think about, you know, what you want. Not about what went wrong necessarily. I mean, you want to get down to the bottom of what went wrong, right? What triggered you? But what do you want? You know, whatever it is that triggered you, you know, what would make it right? Yeah? So just really use that energy. Know that it, that you can manifest as long as we're, we've got powerful energies, okay? If you can get out and in and, and nature and really, you know, pay homage to nature, that is going, you know, the earth, um, the moon, the flowers that are blooming, just whatever it is, you know, there's a lot of, I've seen a lot of birds that are kind of getting together and doing their little dances and everything, and it's really cute. And, <laughs> you know, get into that stuff, enjoy it, right? Stay in the moment, whatever it is, okay? Spirit wants us to really know that to embrace every bit of life, right? I think about the never-ending story and the quest that he goes on, and, you know, going through the muck and the mire and getting stuck in the quick, you know, all of these things are just like what we're going through, right? This is our quest right now. So kind of try to see it that way. Try to embrace the moments, what is to be learned from them, and use this power at this time. Even these heavy energies that are just, you know, ride them, right? Because this is going to be, you know, I was talking about last month about the waves of energy that are coming through. Well, this one is going to be a tidal wave, right? <laughs> Um, Pisces got, um, Tool Anima for their song, and, um, I don't, you know, it wasn't to be taken literally, but I think it was just getting Pisces ready, because Pisces, you know, they are, and it's Scorpio as well, 
um, they had a pretty heavy reading and it was really um, both of them they're they're going to be transmuting a lot of those energies right both of them go deep they're water signs they're emotional they're and um, they're going to be transmuting a lot of these energies for the collective and it was really you know and all of us are really but it just came through strongly in those two readings so prepare <laughs> Prepare for this tidal wave of energy, okay? So this is what's going on. All right. Uh, the moon is at 18 degrees of Libra, it, which is the moon in Tarot, right? <clears throat> so it's really taking on all those aspects of the moon. There are going to be, you know, this is going to be a time of confusion. There are probably going to be secrets being revealed, things being revealed at this time. And, but, you know, it's still shrouded in secrecy and we're not going to know what the truth is, right? You know, who's telling the truth? That kind of thing. Um, but it's also the second supermoon of three, the series of three. This is the second one, and it's the one that's going to be the closest to the Earth. It is the moon of 2020. It is going to be the closest to Earth of all the, the full moons, all right, <clears throat> of 2020. Good thing is, this is about balance, justice, relationships, love, right? This is happening in Libra, and it's like all this energy is getting pointed at Libra. And um, so whatever it is, you know, think about what it's bringing in. Think about what we want, right? Libra, this Libra energy. Because <clears throat> we want truth. We want justice, right? Those are Libra qualities. We want love, beautiful, equal, give and take love, right? We all want that. And this is a time where we can manifest it. But we have just hours ahead of this super moon. We have uh, Uranus squaring Mars. Uranus is in Taurus. Mars is in Aquarius. This is that future energy. You know, Uranus and, Mar and, and uh, Aquarius are both about the future. And Mars, and um, you know, is just helping with that. Taurus is pretty, you know, it's, it's that grounded energy. So, you know, this all by itself is associated with earthquakes and such. So we could possibly actually see something like that happen, especially with the supermoon in play, right? Um, then we have the moon and the sun are in a T-square with Jupiter and Pluto. Just days before, Jupiter and Pluto had uh, their conjunction, right? Which is helping expand all of this. We are going to see, you know, a peak in th this coronavirus business, but that's when the peak, right? So things will start to balance out, right? But we are going to see all of this, you know, our personal transformations, um, and then the collective transformations getting expanded. And that just, you know, happened a few days before this. So this is squaring that, this full moon. The t sun and the moon are squaring it. So, you know, it's making this T-square. So, you know, that's, that's pretty big all in itself, right? <laughs> So, yeah, there's some there's some heavy energies, but this is also very magical energy. Um, the and yeah, we're going to be manifesting with it for sure. It came through strong in today's messages. So, um yeah, just make sure that you're in love with life right find it again if you're not find the magic again look for it and find it because it's such a wonderful beautiful time we're living in and it's 
scary as all this is, it's going to lead to something really magnificent, okay? I promise. You're going to see. All right. Let's see what the cards have to say. Hello, my gorgeous Arians. I hope that you are all doing well. This happens every time I get on here with you guys. I'll have have uh, brushed off the table, and then as soon as I get ready to shuffle the cards, I see like a big glob of hair <laughs> all of a sudden. I don't know where it comes from. All right, so this is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Jupiter, as my readings do tend to be of a spiritual nature. Oh. Look at that. That came out real fast for you guys. All right. Meditation. Meditation. And at the bottom we have determination. Solar plexus and the crown chakra here. And this is something you need to pay attention to is how I'm treating this card. We're going to just get one from this deck and then we're going to get an artist to go along with it as a point of meditation, even. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm seeing a lot of fire here, right? With this meditation card. This is your crown chakra. This is your connection with spirit. Your heart chakra is also showing up here. And, uh, you know, and I don't even usually notice this, but this burst of energy rising up from Earth right that connection to earth here as well because as we reach up into the cosmos it's always very important that we are connected with earth with mother gaia and i see you know this is like energy that's like opening up as it as it comes up to you and so i feel like you're pulling energy from mother earth she's sending you energy fire right this meditation is going to be uh, super important during this time. And, you know, have some fun with it, right? Explore meditation. Explore different types of meditation. So, for those of you who are usually with me, you'll notice these red cards are mixed in. That is the music oracle. These were donated by a subscriber. I'm so thankful. And if you are interested in any of the decks that you see today, I have them listed below. Go check them out. So we're going to get an artist that has a message for you, right? Something about them to embody. So, whatever artist comes up, I encourage you to explore. Explore their lives. Explore their work. Right? These are both music and visual artists, so we'll see what comes out for you. Oh, Janis Joplin. Interesting. With Caravaggio at the bottom. He's an interesting one. We'll take a look at these underlying at the end. I just want to... Huh, that is curious. So, I was just noticing how these kind of are opposites of each other, color-wise, right? That's curious. Just interesting, just interesting. All right, so we have Janice Joplin, Joplin here. She says, evolve, but don't compromise. You're all you've got. The power of love must replace the love of power. Hmm. You are far greater than the sum of your fears. And I think this is a perfect, like what's being said here in this card, is absolutely perfect for these times, right? Because there is a lot of fear, but <clears throat> we are rising above. This is, you know, and yeah, I'm looking at this kind of swirling energy and it's the same color, this, this amber energy, this very kind of, grounded fire right this fiery energy but that that's kind of, that's grounded and um yeah it's just you know it's swirling around you at this time that's it that's what i'm seeing here and yes we are evolving 
as um, as a collective. And it, we are replacing the love of power with the power of love at this time, because what's power getting us right now, right? This is nothing else teaching us how to really tune in to love again and peace. <laughs> And I'm even getting this, um, you know, the her voice, how powerful it was, right? It was very earthy, very raspy, but very powerful. So I'm even getting that kind of grounded um, fire from just thinking about her voice. So that that's a, a, a good person to get for your uh, meditation. You might want to look up some Caravaggio too. He, his, he's, he did some interesting things. <laughs> of course, we'll talk about him a little bit more at the end here. But yeah, so your focus, your meditative artist. For Aries, please. For Aries. Regarding the full moon in Libra. April 7th into the 8th, 2020. And I've decided on a timeline for these, and it is two weeks until the new moon. So from full moon to new moon is how long. This, uh, yeah. This, this reading covers. Of course, a, a lot of times, especially like bigger transformational kind of things, it, it's hard to say exactly how long they will. But for all intents and purposes. Okay, here we go. Wow. And the warrior is at the bottom of the deck. And... That's been coming up a lot, a lot, and because we are, wow, we are warriors for truth, right? Let's see here, the destroyer, agape, ooh, wow, very interesting, and I feel like this desert is supposed to be upside down. Okay, let me get these straightened out now. I just want y'all to see them. <laughs> yeah, through this we are coming into love, right? This destruction is leading to better understanding. Hmm. The desert. Okay, so just to go over the numbers here. We have 
23, which is a mirror number of 32. Here um, we have 72, we have 37, 42, 7, 3. So 72 breaks down to a 9, this uh, 23 breaks down to a 5, and of course we are definitely going through change. Uh, we have 7, 37, which breaks down to a 10, an ending. And nines can, are pretty close to the end as well. They're the completion of a, um, a lesson, typically. Let's see here, 42, 6, which is uh, harmony, 3, growth, 7. And the sevens, we have a couple of, of sevens here. That's challenge, right? But spiritual challenge. So, just wanted to put that that out there for those who like to know. But what I'm seeing here is, you know, I'm drawn to the desert and the fact that it came out upside down because I think the same message would have happened either way and I was drawn to leave it like that. And I think the reason why is this hand reaching down, right? It's like Spirit's way of saying we're here, right? With this agape here, agape. And it mentions in the book that in English, it's agape, right? Our mouth was agape in awe <laughs> at the destroyer. And, you know, this, yes, um, I think we are in a bit of awe right now. You know, we have the desert here, the empty room, the destroyer all surrounding this agape and you know we've been forced into this you know looking at our lives right this destroyer has has taken make it made us take a second look what's important to us what's not and maybe even our fears as well it's making us go within, you know, this empty room here, this the desert. And in the book, you know, all of these cards have a happy ending. They are there to, you know, move things out of our lives that are no longer needed. The desert is, you know, we have sea mirages and, you know, they, they, this, it's teeming with life, really. Probably at this time of year, it's absolutely beautiful, teeming with life. It's kind of illusionary, right? There's not, it, the, it seems like this, this vast empty space, right, right next to the empty room. But we also see these stars that are lighting up within it. So there are things to be learned in these, what seem to be empty spaces, that seem to be these dry, uh, needy places. You know, because it talks in the book about wanting to fill up this empty room, right? We want to fill up our, our lives with, with noise and we've been forced to kind of take a step back, right? This is by God's will. He's reaching down to touch us and help us see things differently, right? Because then we have, you know, out of the darkness, right? The poet. And the poet talks about going to this other side, you know, going into the darkness and coming back out with with truth, with um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Inspiration, yes. Inspiration. And, you know, I'm looking at the the gold that is coming in again and again here. And through this, you know, this is, uh, you know, our inspiration and finding, you know, our destiny, 
right? The starborn here. Going back, you know, we have this empty room with these small glints of light. And then by going within, by exploring this empty room, this vast space, we start, you know, coming into shape, start revealing where we came from. The book talks about going deep into your past and kind of looking at things um, from the perspective that you were, were born with a purpose, right? And kind of seeing it, looking at it as destiny rather than logistics, it says. But I'm also, you know, these little, these crows, the, the crows are seen as messengers from one side to the other. We see this again here. And I see these like crows as turning into little sparks of light here, right? This crystal ball, this moon even, right? With the, the full moon in Libra turning into the egg here. And more colors coming in. So, I feel like it's really saying this meditation, this searching of self, is going to lead you to your destiny. It wants you to find, you know, this creative spark within yourself. Because we all have it. And we are closest to God when we're creating. Whether this is through words, through painting, through drawing, whatever, you know, through, through dance, whatever it is, right? The poet can be a lot of different things, but it speaks truth, right? It's gone into... Um, the depths of this, the desert and the empty room and, and found love through destruction and <laughs> springing back this, you know, this truth to share with others and, you know, explore what you were born to do and see the, oh, the lovers just popped out. See the universe as working in your favor, right? That all of this has been orchestrated for us. Whoops. Okay, let's see what these have to say. We have transformation here at the bottom. Okay. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Love it. All right, we're going to put this one. Um, we're just going to stick him right in here in the middle. Beautiful. So I feel like... <clears throat> the lovers and the magician existence in this deck. I mean, look at that. And even here. <laughs> I feel like these two go together. I feel like, you know, this is saying it's about choice, right? It's about love and choice <clears throat> and even existence. The magician. There, you know, it's like, what do you want to bring into existence? What, you know, right now we have the chance to create the future that we want, right? Our existence as we know it is gone. And we are coming from a place of love. Or we have the choice to come from a place of love. And this is a reminder of that. Basically, this 
totality, which is five of fire, five of wands, clinging to the past, five of water, five of cups, and creativity. Or we're very much saying the same thing, right? We have this, this box, this empty room that we're looking into that is going to help us to see, you know, looking at the past is going to help us see our future, but we need to let go of that past, right? It has us boxed in right now. We let it all out, and then we have this. This is the Empress. Creativity. We get to create. We've, you know, I get drawn to the Starborn card. I mean, like, look at that with all these stars around her head. This is, the, you know, a lot of you probably uh, identify as star seeds, or you might start thinking about it now, right? Um, because we have all these stars around this as well, and this totality. This is about, you know, being in a time of stress and reaching out to others, connection, being completely focused on what we need to do to survive, right? And that is what they're asking us to do. We are in this time of change. We have two more fives here. And another three. Wow, look at that. I didn't even think about that. This Starborn and the Empress are both threes. That's beautiful. <clears throat> we have another six here, which is that um, harmony, right? Peace and harmony. We are uh, this empty room, though. It, you know, we it, it fills us with anxiety at first. We get to fill it with what we really want, right? So this is asking us to. Really look within, right? This meditation. And, oh, Janice Joplin, I mean, like, me and Bobby McGee. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, there is a bit of um, agape love coming in here. And it has been for, for Aries. Um But yeah, we're creating a new future. You are the empress. Whether And remember, you can be either side of the coin. You don't have to be feminine to hold on to this empress energy. Oh, let me straighten this a little bit. Yeah, now I get to pull that down a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, let's get a piece of art for you, and then we'll get closing guidance and look at the bottom of the deck. Piece of art, please, for Aries. Piece of art for Aries. Where do I want to go? Go right here, to the right. Huh. Man, that drives me crazy. It's called January. And look at all this star stuff that's going on. And you know, we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January. And I can't help but feel like this is, um, you know, we've got this, this war thing going on in the background here and everyone feasting in the front. And, you know, there's a change in order coming up, right? It's in the stars. We're the ones fighting the battle right now. But we will receive the rewards. It so all got started in January. <laughs> it all got started in January. and um, But, Ju you know, it's Jupiter and Pluto now doing their dance for this year. And Jupiter likes to give gifts 
to those that are deserving. Okay, so I'm drawn to the wisdom of the oracle for us. For closing guidance for Aries, please. Closing guidance for Aries. Closing guidance for Aries, please. Woo. Okay, you got three. And look at that. We got another meditation card. They really, really want you guys to meditate. <laughs> Yin is at the bottom. So that feminine receptive energy is going to be really important during this period, okay? Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it's too much for me. Okay. So we've got breathe, number 29, which is down to an 11, building blocks, Breaks down to a 10, it's 28, and then we've got soulmates, and that breaks down to a 5. Okay, let's see. So, you know, they want us to, I'm going to read from probably soulmates. But this is a time of rest, right? Of going within. Of, And I think, you know, it's the building blocks now of our future. But also, you know, she's looking to the past here, right? Because we've been asked to look at our past to kind of see what future we want to bring. You know, um, and it really does have to do with kind of finding those little sparks, right, in our past that we forgot, that we lost along the way because society told us that that wasn't possible, that, you know, um, this is the way forward, this is what is the logical thing to do, da-da-da-da-da. <clears throat> so look back and find those because we have, you know, this building being built, but these blocks that are here on the top, they're being ready to be placed, have color, right? Up to here, it's just plain. The foundation. But now we get to start. All right, all good. The destroyer came along, actually, he came along twice since the, the, it happened, the, well, yeah, it happened a second time. And then I got a bright idea, right? See, this is like, um, <laughs> I usually have it um, turned around the other way. I won't go into the logistics of it, right? It's not about the, lo the logistics. Um, it's about the inspiration, yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> I got inspired, and now it's not going to happen again. Ooh. All right, so we're bringing in the color. We're bringing in the good stuff, and this is, you know, your destiny. This is, you know, the, and it's, it is going to take um, kind of going for it, right? Um, so under yin here, we have coming to the edge, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about soulmates. We're going to go ahead and put Yin up here. And I, I hate to cover up any of these because they're all so beautiful. Okay, let's read from soulmates. And I, I kind of got the same feeling from the lovers that they talk about in this book, but you'll hear what I'm saying. So, it's essential meanings, 
And I'm gonna read all of them just because this is a general reading, so any of them could apply. Essential meanings, harmonious partnerships, love, friendship, companionship, a relationship fostering personal growth. You are meant to evolve and transform with the companionship of others. Certain people enter your life in order to take you to the next level of healing, consciousness, and authenticity. It is always a reciprocal experience. Although the results for each of you will vary, you know these people by the strong pull drawing you toward them, and sometimes by a strong aversion to them initially, too. Soulmates can be friends for a life or remain in your life for only a short time. No matter what, you will be changed in ways you can't possibly fathom now. Pay attention to these people today. They are your greatest gifts. Relationship. Consider love in the deepest sense. Love so powerful that you will never be the same, regardless of how long your relationship lasts. Consider friendships and romantic bonds so compelling that they overwhelm you with gratitude or break you open so you will finally claim who you were, who you were meant to be. Even a companion animal reminds you that it is you who is being rescued and healed. Pay attention, for you are in the presence of a soulmate. Come to guide you home to the real you. Prosperity. Strategic alliances are most important right now as you begin to attract the perfect people to support your dreams. This is a journey you will share with others, mentors, business partners, helpers, employees, creative partners, friends, and strangers open doors for you and step through the portal to join you in a harmonic dance of collaboration, commitment, and co-creation. This is what you've been waiting for. And you know... It could be all of the above, and that's it. As I was going through those, I was like, you know, this it's it's all of them, and that the, because you are, you know, this. I'm even like, it's sitting here on this. Breathe card is sitting on on top of existence, and look at how it's like you're you're seeing it from two opposite sides almost. You know, it's. Ah, this is beautiful. You guys are on the verge of something really amazing. And I think we all are as a collective. We just have to be patient, right? We have to breathe through this. We have to do our soul searching and be receptive. <laughs> as you are a warrior. <laughs> Caravaggio. Try to keep violence metaphorical. Adjust your eyes to darkness. A head on the shoulders is worth two in the hand. <laughs> We've got determination and transformation. So I really want to put this transformation this is of course the death card here in the middle because i think it's kind of yeah where it belongs but caravaggio here i feel like you know it's this he's just representing all of this you know the desert the empty room the destroyer right this kind of darkness adjust your eyes to the darkness it's we're gonna have to kind of fight through it right but this is um it is a transformative time and there are beautiful things at the end of it i promise guys i i can you know i just and i think you all can feel it too right if you're here if you're listening i think you guys can feel it too um this warrior card, you know, as we're going through this transformative time, as we're going within, because once again, we have some meditating on uh, a lotus flower this time. She's on a pad here. Could be a lotus flower. But, and then we see this phoenix rising from the ashes. And as it rises from the ashes, you know, as you 
are coming out of this time, you have your truth, right? You have, you know what you stand for. And this, you know, this snake here, we see it here too. Um, some of you could be going through a Kundalini awakening. I, we're going to see a lot happening. Uh, I'd forgotten to mention it in the video, but Pam Gregory was talking about how um, Mars in Aquarius, I think she said, was associated with Kundalini energy. So we could have a lot of awakenings happening with this, right? <clears throat> but as you come out of this time period, you're going to know what your truth is, right? You're going to know what your, des or you have a good idea of what your next step is, what you fight for, right? What you stand for and what needs to be cut out. And with this yin energy along with this solar plexus determination energy, it's that balance, right? The lovers here, finding, and even the soulmates card, finding that balance between the feminine and the masculine, the being receptive and the moving forward. And regardless of which state we're in, you know, that that determination, this knowledge of truth, this knowledge of what we fight for, because the warrior doesn't have to be um, violent, right? This can be in a form of creation with this rainbow here. The yin energy. So how do you move forward with yours, right? This creative energy beautiful all right guys i hope that it resonated i hope it was helpful if so please remember to like subscribe comment share and until next time much love